Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, here's good news for everyone who's looking for something really new in cool, refreshing summer drinks. A folder of grand summer drinks that can be made with Horlicks. And it's free for the asking. Just drop a postcard to Horlicks, Racine, Wisconsin. Have you got that? Horlicks, H-O-R-L-I-C-K-S. Racine, R-A-C-I-N-E, Wisconsin. This little folder gives several fine summer drinks that are just the thing for parties or for serving on warm summer nights. Drop a card tonight. Remember, it's free. In the meantime, get a package of Horlicks malted milk from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Then you'll be all set to try out these cooling recipes when they arrive. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Squire Kemp's Hippodrome was closed day before yesterday. And he has been ordered to appear in Lum's Justice of the Peace Court today to answer the charge of violating a city ordinance prohibiting the operation of a theater on the second floor of a building in Pine Ridge. The case has been called for 2 o'clock at the Juddam Down store. And as we look in on our old friends now, we find Dick Huddleston and Grandpappy Spears, the complaining witnesses, and Lum and Abner waiting on Squire Kemp, the defendant, to put in an appearance. <laughs> Listen. Well, I wish he'd hurry up and get you. I'm getting tired of waiting. Yeah, I've got to get back to the store, Lum. Well, he knows the trial's set for 2 o'clock. Well, if he ain't here pretty soon, why, you can get him for a contact in court or something, can't you, Lum? Well, yeah, I reckon I should, according to law, but I have to fine him for contempt of court on top of everything else. He would accuse us of framing up on him showing up then. Well, I don't care what he thinks. If he don't show up over here, why, we ought to just go ahead and have a trial without him. Well, we can't have a trial less than a defendant. Wait a minute. That was our ring, wasn't it? I don't know. I never paid no attention. Yeah, I think it was, Ron. Yeah, it must be Squire, though. Yeah, it might be. Well, now, if he tries to talk to you into putting a trial off, Ron, just tell him he's supposed to. Hello? You got him down store, and I'm at his guest of the peace talking. I make him come on over here. Oh, well, well, how are you? I never hardly know you. You don't favor yourself hardly. Uh, oh, you are. That ain't squad. Now, we're all sitting here waiting for him now. Yeah, the trial's set for 2 o'clock, but he ain't showed up yet. Huh? Well, I guess so. I don't see no way for me to do anything else. He violated one of the ordinances here in Pine Ridge. And... No, I never neither. I never had a thing to do with it. Dick Huddleston and Grandpappy Spears was the ones that swore out the complaint. Yeah. He said what? Well, he knows better than that. He's just saying that to get your sympathies roused. Well, it would be underhanded if I was doing it for that reason, but... You mean if I... Well, I've got to perform my duty. He's made a violation of the law, and it's up to me to... Well, I do know. I, I never thought you'd take sides again me that way. I, I don't see no reason why this should affect us in no way. I, I'm sorry you feel that way about it. Well, I don't know. I'll have to study it over. I don't want to make no promises. Well, no, I don't want to promise something and men not do it. I, I just, hello? Hello? <laughs> who, who was that, Mom? Uh, nobody. You mean you was talking all that time and there weren't nobody on the phone? Bad news of some kind, Mom? No, I think you're not. Abner, come here a minute. I want to speak to you. Excuse us a minute, fellas. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, that's all right, Mom. Mom, you look like you'd saw gold. What in the world is the matter with you? Abner, would you be much put out if I turn Squire loose this afternoon and find him not guilty? Why, I don't see how you could, Bob. We know that brain well you guilty. There ain't no doubt about that. Uh, why, was that him calling, making some more threats? No, it's something worse than that. I ain't scared of his threats. Well, what's the matter, then? Well, that was Evelina. Evelina? Yeah. 
Squire's been over there talking to her. Got her to believe in that we've closed up that place if here, get, to get him out of the way so we can make more money at our picture show. Oh, well, he's been telling everybody that now. Well, you know, Squire's a member of the school board, and he told Evelina if I never dismissed these charges against him, why, he'd see personally she never got her job back next fall. Well, uh, I'm a low down good for nothing. I want to. Oh, now, she told me just now on the phone if I convicted him this afternoon that me and her was through for good. Our engagement is broke off. Well, I never would have thought Evelina would ever want you to do something that weren't right, Mom. Well, she wouldn't either. I mean, she wouldn't, but he, he's got her believing that he's in the right and we're well, in the wrong. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Well, hello, Squire. We've been waiting for you. Yes, I guess I'm a little late. I expect we better get on up there, Evelyn. I hope I haven't caused any undue anxiety on the part of our distinguished magistrate. Holding up the proceedings of his court of justice. This is as bad. Yeah, I hear him. Uh, this is your own judgment, Mama. I'll stand by you, whatever you do now. Thank you, Evelyn. Come on. <clears throat> well, gentlemen, if everybody's here now, I reckon we may as well get the court opened up and try the case. Yeah, you better come on. Let's get started. Uh, Your Honor, I hope you will accept my sincere apology for my slight tardiness. That's all right, Squire. Yeah, Lom could have fined you if he'd been a mice to do it. But he never. Court will please come to order. Uh, Mr. Skimp, I wonder if you'd mind to sit over here in this chair. Not at all, Your Honor. Not at all. Your slightest wish is my command. <laughs> uh, sit on the floor, if it pleases, of course. <laughs> no, this chair will be all right. Now, uh, gentlemen, I now declare uh, this Justice of the Peace Court duly open to try the case of that of uh, M.K. Skimp, vice versa, the city of Pine Ridge. For the violate of ordinance number, uh, what is it? No, number 32, uh-huh. which reads as follows. It will be considered unlawful for any person or persons to operate or present a theatrical entertainment on anything other than the ground floor of any building within the corporate limits of this city because of the fire hazard. Violation of this ordinance shall be punishable by a fine of not less than $50 and not more than $500, and said place of business shall be permanently closed. Uh, why, Your Honor, I'd like to say a word. Uh, just to... a minute, Squire, uh, Mr. Skim. We'll hear from uh, some plaining witnesses first, and then you have a chance to answer the charges brought again. Uh, Milford Spears, will you please rise and be swore? He's talking to you, Grandpa. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I sure, uh, yeah. Uh, according to this complaint, you've charged M.K. Skimp with uh, operating a picture show on the second floor of the lodge hall, which is a violation of Ordinance 32, which I just now read. Kindly state to the court what you know about it. Well, all I know is that uh, he's got a picture show up there, and it's uh, in the law, and I think it ought to be closed up. It is closed. Quiet, please. Don't be making statements, Mr. Peabody, till you're swore in by the court. Well, you don't think I'm telling something that ain't so, do you? Mr. Peabody, you'll please stop talking unless the court gives you permission. Do you mean that I've got to ask you before I can say anything? Will you hash up before I pop you on or find you for a contempt of court? Have you got any more remarks to make, Mr. Spears? Very yeah, did the him kind of tell me when I can talk. Uh, no, I don't believe I can take enough now to ask Mom, mm-hmm. Your Honor. You better be quiet at me. It's bothering Mom. Well, me and him been parted too long for him to sit up there and try to tell me. Silence in the court, please. The next witness is uh, Mr. J.R. Huddleston. Who? Oh, Nick. <laughs> Stand up and be swore, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state to the court, Mr. Huddleston, just what you know in regards to this case. Well, while I have no personal interest in the case whatever, or no ill feelings of any kind against Squire here, I feel that the operation of a picture show or any other kind of an entertainment that would attract a large crowd is a hazard to the lives of the people who attend. And this particular building where Squire was operating his show is a very old frame building, and there's only one exit from the upstairs. A little narrow stairway that would be entirely too small to allow the crowd to get out and see so far. And that's the reason that I signed a complaint. Mm-hmm. 
have you heard anybody else besides yourself and Mr. Spears here that thinks you're trying to say you can run a picture show up there? Well, yes, I have. I've talked to several about it. Of course, there's a lot of folks that haven't stopped to realize the danger. Well, that don't make no difference about that, no way. If it's against the law, it's got to be closed. I'll decide the case then, uh, Mr. Spears. You know, Parsi, that Mr. Skimp was running a picture show on the second floor of a building, Mr. Huddleston? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I'll be back same long, can't be collect nothing. That'll be all, Mr. Huddleston. Uh, Mr. Skimp, uh, you've heard the charges brung again you, and you've heard the law read. Do you, uh, are you guilty or not guilty? Well, Your Honor, that's what I thought you would here to decide on. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's right. <laughs> Well, are there any remarks you'd like to make before I pass judgment? Why, yes. Uh, I'd like to ask the court a question, if it's uh, permissible. All right, stand up and be sure, then. Well, well, I'm not going to testify, Your Honor. This is just a question that I want to ask you. Oh, well, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, did you receive a telephone call shortly before I got here a few minutes ago? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, was it a young lady that called you? And it was Evelina. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. I'm perfectly willing to leave the case in your hands, and I trust that the complaining witnesses, my good friends, Mr. Huddleston and Mr. Spears, will be satisfied and abide by your verdict. <laughs> well, if that's all the evidence they are, I reckon it's left up to me to give the verdict. Any questions anybody would like to ask? Can I just choose your own judgment, Mom? Well, gentlemen, after reading the law and hearing the evidence in this case, I find the defendant... Guilty. And by the power invested in me as Justice of the Peace of Coverleaf Township, I impose a minimum fine of fifty dollars in order. Well, quite a bit of last minute strategy. It didn't work out so well. Lum may be in bed with Evelina now, but in Hippodrome is out of the way. Are you ever tempted to purchase a cheap imitation of Horlicks, thinking you might get a bargain? If so, listen to what this mother says. I am the mother of two babies. When they were only a few weeks old, I was told to give them Horlick's malted milk to build them up and increase their weight. I thought Horlick's expensive, so I purchased a cheaper kind of milk that the clerk said was just as good. It didn't help the babies a bit. They didn't gain weight and were weak and fretful. So I went back to the store, and this time I insisted on Horlick's. And I'm glad I did. I won't take your time telling you how big and healthy my children are now. But I do hope you'll try and prevent other mothers from making the same mistake I did. They just can't economize on inferior kinds of malted milk. That mother is right. You can't economize by buying a cheap imitation of Horlicks. To get full value for your money, always insist on Horlicks, the original. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good